Okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Yun Bo Wang from Department of Cellular and Genetic Medicine School of Basic Medical Sciences, Fudan University. Today, I'm going to talk to you with uh, cancer genetics. So in this lecture, I will focus on three key questions of uh, the cancer research field. That is, what is cancer? And then, what causes cancer? And how to prevent and diagnose cancer? So, with these three questions, I will divide my talk into three parts. First, I will briefly introduce the basic concept of cancer. And then, I will talk about the genetic underpins of cancer and the major types of cancer genes and how cancer initiate, initiate and progress. Then I will discuss with you in the third part how we can use the knowledge that we learn from cancer genetics to prevent and diagnose cancer. So what is cancer? As you may all know, that cancer is the most fearsome disease and now it's soon becoming the leading cause of death worldwide so as many as one in three individuals develop cancer and one in four will die of it. Die of it. As shown in this figure, here shows the, the death rate. Seven, 75 years of death rate in US. And these are the, main, the leading cause of death. death. So here this uh, dark blue is the cancer death rate. And here the light green is the heart disease. So in comparison, you can see that in the last 30 years, from 1980 to 2010, so the death rate of heart disease decreased quite dramatically, but the cancer death rate does not change that much. That means cancer still is still a big challenge to us, but we can explain the reasons. You can imagine that heart is basically one tissue, and with uh, relatively easy causes of heart disease. So we have uh, more effective prevention and treatment strategies. But emerging cancer involves essentially all the tissues of our human body and with a lot of, uh, a lot of causes. So it's much more complex than heart disease. And in recent years, we actually have made much progress in cancer in terms of genetics and also cancer cell biology. And this, and I think the situation here will change in the upcoming 10 to 20 years. So by definition, what tumor or neoplasm is uh, an abnormal cell that grows and proliferates out of control. And as long as these tumor cells do not become invasive, then we call it benign. And in case the tumor cells have acquired the ability to invade the surrounding tissues, we call it malignant. So the and cancer is a tumor. Only when it's uh, malignant means it acquires the ability to invade the neighboring or the surrounding tissues. Another main concept in cancer is metastasis. This is the main, main reason for death of cancer. This metastasis is the spread of malignant tumor cells throughout the, the body, typically through the blood and lympho, lymph, lymphatic system. As I have mentioned, cancer actually involved almost essentially were the tissues in the human body. There are actually a large variety types of cancer that can be classified to the tissue and cell type from which the, the cancer and the cancer derive. This can be classified as carcinoma. That is the cancer derived from the epithelial cells. As displayed here, these are epithelial cells. So the carcinoma comprise of 80% that means the most majority of ca human cancer. And then the sarcoma is derived from the mesenchymal origin like fibroblast or muscle tissue. 
There are still other types of cancer, like leukemia, lymphoma, that derive from the homopoietic cells, and also cancer from the nervous system. So that's how we classify cancer types, and why this uh, epithelial derived carcinoma is the majority. Maybe the reason is maybe not the most dividing cells in the human body is or resides in the epithelium. So as, as shown here as an example, that is the development of the cancer of the epithelium of the uterine cer cervix. You can see, as you can see in the, in the normal epithelium, epithelium, the cells are, well, are in a well-structured uh, order that the only dividing source in, is in the basal layer. I would like to point out that here, the blue, the blue staining is uh, the dividing source. And you can see that in the normal source, the dividing, in the normal situation, the dividing source only, only locates in the basal layer. And during the, in the no grade intra epithelial neoplasm, the the basal layer, the source from the basal layer, layer goes up into the epithelium, and it means part of the epithelium is also proliferation, proliferating and dividing. And then in the higher grade of uh, intra epithelium neoplasm, essentially where the epithelium cells are dividing and proliferation. And these two stages are still in the benign, in the benign stages we call benign tumor because it does not invade the neighboring or surrounding tissues. But in the invasive carcinoma stage, that actually the dividing cells invite, invade the basal layer and goes into the collective tissue part. And this is what we call the carcinoma or cancer. So, Cancer can originate from very different, very different tissues and organs. So in general, this cancer ar arises from different organs can be considered as a very different disease. This figure shows the cancer incidence rate and death rate of different types of cancers. The Incidence is shown in the dark green, and the death rate is shown in the light green. You can see that for different cancers, the different types of cancer, the incidence rate and the death rate are essentially very different. So this is what about what is cancer. In this part, just have a brief summary. I have introduced you the some basic concepts of cancer. So what is the uh, what is cancer? Cancer is a cell grows and proliferate and out of control, and then it will form tumor. And tumor can be classified to benign and malignant. Benign tumor you know, remains, remains in the territory where it uh, arises. And a malignant tumor is that the tumor cells invite or goes into the neighboring tissues. So in Cancer, is, cancer cells is that they reproduce without strain and they colonize other tissues. These are two properties of cancer cells. And then can, I, I have told you that cancer is a very complex and very virulent disease. It's now becoming the leading cause of death worldwide. And there are a lot of uh, kinds of kinds of cancer that can, can be classified based on their tissue or cell origin. And these different types of cancer can in general considered as very different disease. So with this knowledge of cancer, I will come to the, the second part of, uh, of this lecture. One would, uh, one would think what or can, what causes this cancer, this very knife-taking disease. So currently, there are, these are some known, known causes of cancer. The first three are external, 
external reasons, including chemical exposure, radiation, and infection. And the last two are intrinsic reasons. For example, the mutations that you, you, you inherited from your, from your parents, that is in the, in the case of uh, familial cancer syndromes, or mutation or chromosome abnormalities that in the, in the process of cell division. I will give you some, for, for this uh, external reasons, for example, the chemical exposure. One example is that the cigarette smoking, the tomato, tobacco in the cigarette smoking that will cause lung cancer. And also the diet, one component called a flat toxin that will lead to liver cancer for the radiation. So the UV, UV night irradiation and also X-ray irradiation will cause specific type of uh, skin cancer. And virus infection or, and bacteria infection will cause certain types of cancer. For example, the Epstein-Barr virus will lead to the lymphoma. The hepatitis B virus will lead to liver cancer and the puppy normal virus will lead to cerver cervical cancer and so on. So the last two causes, as you can see, they are obviously linked with uh, genetic, genetic causes or genetic changes. However, for the first three external, co external causes, now there are a lot of evidence demonstrating that these external changes have their genetic underpins linked with cancer. To support with this argument, I will give you two very, uh, two representative example in, for in, the, in, the, in this external causes. The first example is the, is the um, aflatoxin B. And uh, aflatoxin B is a toxin from mold that grows on green and peanuts when stored in, in humid tropical conditions. And it's known a uh, contribut contributory cause of liver cancer in the tropics with a characteristic mutation of uh, a gene P53, which is a well-known tumor suppressor gene. I will talk, uh, talk more, more detail later. So when this uh, aflatoxin is in, the, is in the liver, it will be converted to an active form. And this active form will react, will directly react, react with the DNA and then cause DNA mutation. And another example is the Ross sarcoma virus. And this virus is the first character is first characterized in nineteen in nineteen ten by by a scientist Peter Ross from Rockefeller Institute. And they found this virus can cause the, the sarcoma in chicken and he isolated this virus and you can See that this virus is named after after his name, called Ross sarcoma virus. And then in in uh, 1970s, early 1970s, scientists have discovered that this virus contains four genes. Actually, three the first three genes that are essential for the life cycle of virus, as shown in comparison with the normal virus here. But this, this uh, Ross sarcoma virus contains uh, additional gene called SARC, named after sarcoma. And this gene is, is uh, special. It's not essential for the life cycle of the virus, but it can transform the animal fibroblast, like shown here. This is the normal animal fibroblast. After the Sark transformations, you know, grows out of control. So that means this Sark gene is what causes the phenotype changes. And then in middle, in the middle 1970s, Michael Bishop and his uh, postdoc, Harriet Warmers, in University of California, San Francisco, 
they discovered that this virus carrying such gene actually has a counterpart, has a counterpart in the chicken. So for this discovery, that they win the Nobel Prize in, in 1989. So these two examples clearly demonstrate that all these uh, external reasons causing, causing, causing cancer that has the genetic changes linked with, linked with the tumor formation. So now through, um, through decades of study, it's generally accepted that cancer is a genetic disease. Or more precisely, we should see that cancer arises from male function of genes, including mutation and or aberrant expression of genes. There are three types of, uh, three categories of genes that are involved in cancer development. They are proto-oncogenes and oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes and DNA repair genes. So before I talk more about these uh, three categories of cancer genes, I will introduce you to uh, important, important uh, terminology here, which is uh, GM9 mutation versus somatic mutation. So in classic genetics, or the genetic diseases are caused by GM9 mutation. What is GM9 mutation? GM9 mutation is not a mutation that you, you inherited from your parents. And it will affect all the cells of your, of your body. And in, in, the, in the case of cancer, it will cause familial cancer sim, syndromes, or called inherited cancer predisposing syndromes. And this cancer predisposing syndrome that accounts for like around 5% of all cancers. However, the majority cases is caused, is caused by somatic mutation. So somatic mutation is the mutation that occur sporadically and is in a certain type of tissue or location in your body. It's not, they are not heritable means they are not inherited from your, from your parents. And this somatic mutation is very important for cancer genetics as it's responsible for the majority, probably war types of cancer, including this uh, familial, familial uh, cancer syndromes. Then I will come to talk with you three types of cancer genes. The first class is called proto-oncogenes and oncogenes. As you may remember, when scientists discover the SARC, the SARC oncogene, they found that in the animal, in the animal cell, it, cont it contains a cellular SARC gene. And SARC, pro SARC gene prob is the first oncogene or proto-oncogene that has been discovered. So what is a proto-oncogene? So proto-oncogene is the genes which are involved in the promotion of cell division and proliferation. And gain of function mutation of these genes can drive the cell toward cancer. And the oncogene is the mutation over active or overexpressed forms of proto-oncogenes. So you can see, you can think that proto-oncogene is the precursor of oncogene. So when the proto-oncogene is gain of function by mutation, then it will convert it to oncogenes. And the, the feature of onco is proto-oncogene or oncogene is a uh, gain of function and is dominant at cellular level. That means one annual of this uh, proto-oncogene goes wrong will cause the cellular phenotypes. You can imagine this proto-oncogene is, the, is like the accelerator of the car. If you push harder, then it will go much faster. That is how the proto-oncogene is converted to oncogene. And what does this proto-oncogene do in the cell? 
And in summary, there are five or six categories of uh, certain the functions of these proto-oncogenes, including circulated growth factors, growth factor receptors, and cytoplasmic signal transduction proteins, and nuclear proteins, transcription factors, and the, the gene regulate cell cycle or regulate or anti-apoptosis genes. That's the main functions of uh, proto-oncogenes. And here are some typical examples of oncogene. For example, the RAS oncogene is uh, GTPase, and it's activated, in, it's activated in many types of cancers. And the MIC, MIC is, uh, is a master transcription or transcription factor. It's overexpressed in colon, in colon cancer and amplified in lung and rearrangement, rearranged in lymphoma. And there are a couple of uh, tyrosine kinase, like RAT, like MAT, and BCR able. Also, there is a cell cycle recognition, kinase recognition gene, the CDK4, and the BCL2 is a famous anti apoptosis gene. And then, how this uh, proto oncogene are activated? during and then promote the tumor, tumor cell growth. So in, as, as displayed in this figure, this, this is a, a proto-oncogene, and this proto-oncogene can be activated by chromosome translocation, either with a new promoter or from a fusion protein. And this, this translocation will, will activate activate this, this protein and produce more proteins which will, which will stimulate the cell growth and proliferation. It also can be amplified by gene amplification. In normal condition, you have one copy. And in the tumor cells, it can amplify it into many copies that will enhance, enhance the expression of these genes and also leading to cell growth and proliferation. Also, this proto-oncogene can be activated by point mutation. And this point mutation can produce active form of this proto-oncogene and forming oncogene. But I will give you some representative examples of this uh, mechanism, mechanism of uh, proto-oncogene activation. The first example is uh, activation via chromosome translocation. As you can see here, this is the, uh, the famous, famous uh, Philadelphia chromosome. It's found in uh, chronic, chronic myeloid leukemia. And in, in, uh, in this cancer disease, that part of the uh, lower part of this chromosome 9 translocate to the chromosome 22 and they swap. In the end, they form a very small, a tiny chromosome, which is called Philadelphia chromosome. It's named after the city where this chromosome has been found. And this chromosome rearrangement or translocation causes a uh, result in a fusion protein that involves the PCR, PCR and ABO. And ABO is a tyrosine catalyst, and this fusion protein will produce an activated ABO, ABO protein, which will promote tumor cell growth and proliferation. And this kind of, uh, this kind of chromosome translocation can be, now can be easily detected by fluorescence labeled in situ hybridization, that is fish. So as you can see from this picture, these this two genes, ABO and PCR, we, we design DNA probes labeled with different fluorescence that can be hybridized, hybridized to these two genes. So in normal cells, because these two genes are in different chromosomes, they should be separate. However, in the ab abnormal situation, they come together, but they don't merge. But in the fusion protein, you can see that the red merge with green, that is yellow. So by this way, you can easily detect the abnormal situation and 
the fusion protein. So this is how fish works. In case of this detection, detection uh, uh, chromosome rearrangement, you design, you design DNA probes that, that is uh, complementary to, to the target, target part of the target gene of the chromosome. Then you can prepare, prepare the metal phase chromosome on microsnide and then you denature denature the chromosome DNA and then you do the hybridization with this DNA probes labeled with fluorophore and then you observe the results and the fluorescence microscope. This is how you observe the results like here. The second exa example is the activation of proto-oncogene via gene amplification. And this example involves a gene called, a proto-oncogene called MIC. And MIC is uh, the chromosome changes and amplification of a MIC gene in cancer cells like neuronal blastoma, non-cancer. And this results in a so-called double minute chromosomes as seen here in the night, night yellow. And that means uh, also detected by, by, probe, by DNA hybridization. And you can see that there are many copies of this miniature chromosomes. That means there are many more copies of this MIC gene. That is how gene amplification leads to activation of the proto-angle gene. Can you uh, raise the question later? I will, I will leave time some time for this. So the, the third example is involved in the activation by point mutation. And this, in this example is the very famous oncogene RAS. So this, this figure displays the RAS signaling pathway. So you can see here RAS actually is uh, GTPase. It has a GTP bound form and GTP bound form, and by this it can activate the downstream signaling pathways to promote cell survival and proliferation. So the point mutation will produce con constitutively active form of RAS, and then promoting cell death, cell, cell growth. And actually, RAS muta point mutation has been found in several tumors, including pancreatic colorectal, lung, and bladder, bladder cancer. So this is, uh, what, this is what about uh, proto-oncogene and oncogenes. Now, the second major type of uh, cancer critical genes is called tumor suppressor genes. And tumor suppressor genes actually, they, they, act, they act in the same in the same pathways as oncogenes, but as opposing, opposing effects. They normally exert a negative effect on cellular division and proliferation. And it's, they are recessive at cellular level. That means both of the, both alleles have to be, both alleles have to be inactivate to have an effect, have a cellular effect. And Loss of function of in both the needles can be, can be achieved by loss of uh, heterozygosity and so-called two-hit hypothesis. So the tumor suppressor gene is more like uh, brakes, brakes in the car. When the, brakes, when the brake is loss of function in the car, you cannot stop it. It just go and will cause a, cause a problem. So here, this table summarizes some, some representative examples of tumor suppressor genes. For example, the DCC genes, that is uh, cell service, in, involved in cell service interactions and is found in colorectal, colorectal cancer. And the WT1, this is, uh, this is uh, the gene called the early, early aging of the patients, called, which is the Worms, worms tumor and it's a transcription factor and also found in non-cancer. 
and the RB gene, which I will talk a, a lot more later, which is also a transcription factor and is found in the familial and spor sporadic, sporadic retinal blastoma, blastoma and also found in the sporadic small cell non-carcinoma. And then the P53 genes, which is also a transcription factor, is found in the familial Li from many syndrome and is mutated in, you know, almost in most types of uh, cancer. And then the BCR, BRCA1 and BRCA2, they are also, they are DNA repair genes and they are involved in breast cancer in both familial and sporadic breast and uh, ovarian, ovarian tumors. So here is the mechanism leading to loss of heterozygosity. When one annual of the tumor suppressor gene is mutated, then it's in a situation called, in, it's in a heterozygosity situation. And in the, in the case of, uh, in the process of cell division, the, the normal annual is lost. By, this is the process called loss of uh, heterozygosity. And this can be achieved by chromosome loss. That means the whole complete normal chromosome is lost, or by gene deletion, and the normal annual is deleted, and by chromosome translocation, or by loss by duplication. In the duplication process, you know, this mutant annual will be duplicated and form both, both um, aberrant annual or by mitotic recombination and by point mutation. And here I will, I will talk about the, a very famous and representative uh, tumor suppressor gene involved, in, involved cancer. It's called retinal, retinal blast, blastoma. And re, retinal blastoma, what is retinal blastoma? It's a tumor of a retinal stem cell it's uh, effective in the eye of the, of, the, of the patient and affects like one in 20,000 infants. And they are both familial and sporadic forms of uh, retinal blastoma. And the average age at presentation for the familial is 26 months and is eight months. And for the sporadic is 26 months. And both males and females are equally affected. And in the familial case, it's roughly like 40%. And the sporadic case, is like 60, 60%. So they, people have found that, scientists have found that the RB gene on chromosome 13, that is the cause of this uh, cancer, cancer syndrome. And this RB gene is the first tumor suppressor gene discovered. And here I will, I will talk, uh, talk with you the Nudsen's, Nudsen's two-hit hypothesis. So this is, this familial retinal blastoma is the proto, prototype of this uh, hypothesis, as shown here in the family tree. So the effective, the f effective people are represented in field boxes or field cycles. You can see that this, this uh, mutation is inherited from the, from the parents. And in the effective, in, in, in the effective case, that there are one, no, one, there is one normal endeal and uh, one aberrant endeal that is inherited from the parents. And during the developmental process, the other, the other duo is lost by so-called loss of uh, heterozygosity. And then, in, in the end, two of the annual, normal annual of RB gene is lost. And you see, and eventually will cause cancer, will ca to cause tumor cells. And here is the sporadic case. So you can see here there is actually no, no effective people in the, in the relatives, in your close relatives. So this, this 
effective cases is, a, is a caused by sporadic mutation RB gene. So this is how, how it works in, in this case. First, by sporadic mutation, one allele of this RB gene is lost. And then by loss of heterozygosity, both alleles, both normal alleles is lost and then will cause the tumor cells. So this is, based on this, Knudsen have proposed two-hit hypothesis, which means that first you have to inactivate one annual of this gene, and then during the development or the disease progression, then you will activate, activate the second annual, and then eventually will cause tumor. This is what, what is called the two-hit hypothesis. So, in, as, I, as I have mentioned, there are heritable and non-heritable retinal blastoma, and actually there are all, both of them are caused by the mutation the RB gene. So there are some differences as summarized in this table. So in the heritated form, actually in the heritated form you have uh, effective relative close relatives, and in the sporadic team you have no effective relative relatives. And in the inherited team, since you have uh, one mutation directly inherited from your parents, so the, the age of uh, presentation is much earlier than the sporadic team is roughly like eight months. In comparison, the sporadic form is like 20, 24 months. And the tumor distribution, so in the inherited, inherited form, that is more likely that both eyes, both eyes are affected, so it's usually bilateral, means both eyes are affected, and also can cause tumors in other, in other locations, which is called multifocal. And in the sporadic, sporadic condition, it's more likely unilateral, means affect only one eye. And so in the inherited form, it has increased risk for other primary tumors. So what is, what is this RB gene? So RB gene which is involved in the cell cycle recognition, as you can see here, which is, depends on the phosphorylation status of this RB gene. When it's uh, not phosphorylated, it will bind to the E2, F2. This is the transcription factor regulating the G2S, G1-2S cell cycle progression. And will this RB bind to E2F2, E2F will inactivate E2F and then block the G2, uh, G1 to S cell cycle transition. But upon phosphorylation, the RB gene will be, re RB protein will be, will be released and then will activate the E2F gene and cause the cell cycle, cell cycle progression. And RB, RB mutations have been identified in, also in various other other cancers, including osteo, osteosarcoma, small cell, small cell non-carcinoma, blood, blood, breast, and so many and many other types of cancers. And retinal, the conventional therapy for retinal blastoma is radio, radiotherapy. Upon any detection, if you have, if you give the patients radiotherapy, you can see that their survival the mortality rates, or here should be the survival rates, the, the or the mortality rates, you know, you, you can see that decrease, decrease quite a lot. That means the radiotherapy patient way for the retinal blastoma, particularly when given at the earlier, earlier stage. So the, the second very famous example of the tumor suppressor gene, I will talk about the TP53. TP53 locates in chromosome 17 and encodes a protein called P53 because this uh, molecular weight of this protein is like 53 K Dalton. And lots of, P, lots of uh, function mutation TP53 gene are involved in most, in most human cancers. Mutation have been found in more than 50% of war of all cancers, so it's called the guardian of the guardian of the genome. 
and the Gemini mutation in TP53 causes an inherited cancer predisposing condition known as Leifrau Menlin syndrome. And this is a rare autosomal dominant syndrome characterized by, by, by tumor in multiple sites. Since you can imagine that T53 is so important in, in, cancer, in cancer development, so when it's lost of function, then it will, it will, it will cause a lot of, uh, lot of uh, tumor, tumor types. So here is the, the cellular function of P53. So P53 is activated by, by stress like, like DNA damage and telomerase shortening or hyp hypoxia. And these are all the external, external signaling network can induce tumor. And when, this, when upon this uh, external, external stimulation, the P53 protein will be activated and then it will cause the cell cycle arrest so senescence or apoptosis to prevent to prevent the cell become a become a tumor cell. And P T B fifty three th this is not essential essential for normal development. If you knock out P fifty three in the mouse, the mouse you know develop embryonic embryonic of the mouse develop normal. But when the P fifty three is mutated and the cell will accum accumulate DNA damage and will escape apoptosis and will, will lead to genetic instability and accumulate mutations. And upon drug response, it will produce resistance to drug and, and radiation. And this is about tumor suppressor genes. Then I will, I will come to the third major class of uh, tumor genes, which is called DNA repair genes. In our genome, there are, there are genes in, ensure that the genetic information is actually copied during the cell division and cell cycle. So that means the DNA repair and the DNA damage must be balanced to keep a homeostasis. Keep a homeostasis. So if the, if the DNA damage DNA repair machinery goes wrong, and there will, will be accumulation of DNA damage, then will lead to cancer, hetero, hereditary diseases, and also, also some genetic, genetic divergence. And mutations in these DNA repair genes need to increase in frequency of mutations also in, in other cancer genes such as uh, proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. Since this uh, DNA repair genes, also both alleles of the DNA, DNA repair genes need to be inactivated to cause cancer. So a lot of people just classified, also classified the DNA repair genes into tumor suppressor genes. Again, I will give you some famous example of uh, DNA repair genes. The first example is the BRCA12 gene in breast and uh, open the cancer. So breast cancer is uh, the most prominent cancer type in, in women. So it affects like one in 10 women and represents 31% of can all cancers in, in women. And 5% five, five of the breast cancers are hered hereditary. That means in carry inherited mutation. And this herit Familial, familial breast cancer has any age onset, then sporadic forms. Inherited breast and ovary cancer is an autosomal dominant condition and occurs as a result of the mutation of DNA repair genes, which is BC, BRCA1 in chromosome 17 and BRCA2 in chromosome 13. BRCA1 is, uh, is important for homologous recombination cellular repair of DNA damage, in particularly double-stranded DNA break, and transcription of mRNA, mRNA and mutations in this BC, BRCA1 also are involved in ovarian cancer, and BC, BRCA2 also plays a role in the timing of uh, mitosis in the cell cycle. <coughs> 
as you can see from, from this, this figure, when in comparison with the general, general population, the, the incidence of uh, breast cancer just increase in the general pro population with the increase of age. However, when, when the people carrying a mutation with this BRCA, BRCA gene, the cancer risk is increased very dramatically. So it's very important to, to detect this uh, BRCA gene at some, at some age point for women, particularly in the women have a family, fa family history of breast or ovary, ovary cancer. Okay, then let's take a break for 10 minutes.